So we had 10 minutes of basketball. All right, this is my book, Gonzo Education. It's available on Amazon and in Barnes and Nobles. And I'm just gonna read, uh, I'll, I'll pick a chapter to read from. This chapter, chapter eight, free pizza. It's always raining during funerals on TV and it was no different for mom service. I wasn't in the mood for sunshine anyways. I got through it high on painkillers, sobbing like a little girl. I was fine on the drive there to Kerrville, but I totally lost it when I saw the casket and realized mom was inside. I'll never get over what happened the last year of her life. I wish I could have saved her. I was surprised to see our father there. The look on his face made me sick to my stomach. It was the closest thing he'd ever come to smiling. He was gloating like he'd won something. Apparently, by his disturbing reaction, she must have taken some of her, his secrets to the grave. He hadn't spoken to her in more than 20 years, and he never once had a nice word to say about her. Even when she lived down the street, he used to drive by and say something nasty in front of his kids. He walked up to both Michael and me, shook our hands, and said he was proud of us. If I could do it again, I would not have shaken his hand. I would have punched him in the stomach. The narcissistic sociopath thought we actually cared whether or not he was proud of us. After the funeral, Benny helped Michael and I clean out our storage unit and move stuff to Austin. Benny talked about how much he liked our mom and how she was always nice to him. It was the last time I ever went to San Antonio and the second to last time I ever saw Benny. I didn't take any time off from school after she died. It wasn't an option. I forced myself to walk around and go about my routine. She wasn't dead, she was on vacation. Despite my denial, the world felt different. And in the back of my mind, I knew she was gone. Continuing with college is how I coped. I pretend she'd get a copy of my grades every semester. 